Hippo was a prominent theoretical physicist and philosopher known for his significant contribution to quantum mechanics and his philosophical ideas about nature of reality. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the interesting ideas of David Bohm based on his letters to three women. Three women are Hannah Lowy, the former girlfriend of Bohm, Melba, fellow physicist and former student of Robert Oppenheimer. David Bohm himself was a student of Robert Oppenheimer, the father of atomic bomb, and Miriam Nubik, who was a mathematician and a close friend of Bohm. The contents of this video are based on the book David Wall, Chance and Causality, Letters to Three Women, that was written by Chris Talbot. One of the topics that David Wall was engaged in was the concept of qualitative infinity, a key idea with dialectical materialism. This concept suggests that reality is composed of multiple layers, like onion. Think of every layer is a certain reality and deep down to the middle layer so just having that analogy in mind the concept suggests that reality that each layer possess its own unique characteristics laws dynamics these layers are not isolated or independent but they are interconnected. They influence one another in a complex and often nonlinear ways. Uh, the idea reflects the dialectical principle that everything in the universe is in a state of continuous change and development with contradiction and interactions. For example, the curvature of the last layer is defined based on the curvature of the layer before that. And if, think of, if you think about a little organism living on the very last layer of the onion, that has its own curves, its own softness, color, its own properties. And the organism living there has some sort of freedom. But part of that properties are governed by the layer before that, like what should the curvature be, what should the color be, how much moisture it has, so it all are governed based on the previous layer. And, and the same goes on. And this is how Bohm suggests that there are infinite layers of reality. Now the qualitative infinity in quantum mechanics, how is that explained by Bohm? He applies this notion of multiple levels of reality to quantum mechanics, the field that is apparently contradictory, such as the wave particle duality and the measurement problem, in the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, these contradictions are often seen as fundamental with quantum events having a, a, an inherently pluralistic and paradoxical nature. However, both believe that these paradoxes could be resolved by recognizing that quantum mechanics quantum phenomena exist at different levels of reality. For example, in Bohm's causal interpretation, also known as Bohmian mechanics, he introduced the idea of a pilot wave guiding the motion of particles. At one level, quantum particles follow deterministic paths governed by hidden variables that are not directly observable. At another level, the wave function represents a probabilistic description of the system, but this does not mean that reality itself is probabilistic. Instead, Bohm viewed the probabilistic nature of quantum theory as a reflection of our limited understanding of the deeper hidden dynamics governing the system. The deeper level where determinism reigns interacts with the observable level but the laws governing each are distinct with the wave guiding the particle's trajectory. So when I think about this, it looks like what Bohm means is what we see as measurement problem or the contradiction in quantum kind of wave particle duality that is 
it comes because of hidden variables from another level of reality. While David Bohm's interpretation remains an intellectually intriguing alternative for Copenhagen interpretation, the 2022 Nobel Prize went to physicists who essentially proved that there's no local hidden variable that governs weirdness of quantum mechanics. So I think what David Bohm means by hidden variable is the hidden variable from another level of reality, which sounds really interesting. So think about an organism living on the surface of an onion with its own laws and everything, and everything is deterministic in that level, except if some, except some weirdness comes from deeper level and the change is something in the life of that organism that leaves on the surface. If the organism tries to find what was the cause with all the laws of that layer, it wouldn't be able to find it. There's no local hidden variable to govern those laws uh, because that comes from another level. Dialectical thinking and scientific inquiry. The Bohm's dialectical approach means Understanding that reality is not uniform or reducible to a single set of laws. The principles that apply to one level of reality may not apply at another level. For instance, in classical physics, uh, laws like Newton's law of motion govern the behavior of macroscopic objects at the quantum level. However, the behavior of particles seems to be governed by probabilities. This indeterminacy is not an ultimate feature of reality, but rather a reflection of our incomplete knowledge of the deeper structures that influence quantum behavior. In this sense, Bo saw qualitative infinity as a way to reconcile the apparent contradictions between classical and quantum physics. Each operate under different principles because they describe different levels of reality. However, these levels are not disconnected. Rather, they are part of a larger evolving whole. The interactions between these levels are dialectical, meaning that they shape and transform one another over time. As one level develops, it influences other levels, leading to new emergent properties and laws that were not previously apparent. Dialectical materialism and evolution of reality. In Bob's worldview, the understanding of reality aligns closely with dialectical materialism, which posits that all of existence is in a state of flux and transformation. Dialectical materialism, as developed by Marx and Engels, emphasizes that nature and society are governed by contradictions. And these contradictions drive development. For example, the interplay between opposites, such as wave and particle, order, chaos, or determinism and indeterminism, creates the dynamic process we observe in nature. Each contradiction, rather than being a flaw or a paradox, is a source of progress and change. Bohm believed that the evolution of the universe could be understood through this lens. The universe does not operate according to a single fixed set of laws. These emergent levels reflect a qualitative shift, introducing novel dynamics that were not present in earlier stages. So the paradoxes, the contradictions, those are what brings gradient. When I hear this, I think of it as reality being like a mathematical concept and it's neutral form. There's no flux, there's no gradient. When there is contradiction, when there are hills and traps, that's where the flux happened, that's where something happened. Bohm believed that this concept is similar to how biological evolution introduces entirely new form of life with different characteristics from their ancestors, despite being rooted in the same underlying physical processes. 
Unity of opposites in physics. Bohm also applied the dialectical concept of the unity of opposites to quantum mechanics. This concept holds that opposites are not mutually exclusive, but are instead interdependent and codifying each other. In quantum theory, for example, particles exhibit both wave-like and particle-like behavior. The Copenhagen interpretation treats this duality as a fundamental paradox of quantum mechanics and that is resolved only during measurement when one aspect, wave or particle, is observed. Bohm, on the other hand, saw this duality as an expression of different levels of reality. The particle and wave aspects are not contradictory, but represent different aspects of the same underlying entity, which behaves differently depending on the level at which it is observed. So in his view, wave-like and particle-like behaviors are opposites that uh, codify reality depending on where they get observed. What does that mean exactly? When we don't do measurement, the wave-like property shows itself. Does that mean that's a different level of reality when we don't do measurement? To me, this sounds like many world interpretation. Implication for science and philosophy. By applying dialectical materialism to quantum mechanics, Bohm was advocating for a more holistic and interconnected view of nature. He argued that the traditional approach in physics, which often seeks to reduce phenomena to a single explanatory framework, misses the complexity of reality. Instead, Bohm's reality concept suggests that scientific progress requires acknowledging the multiplicity of the levels and the dialectical interaction between them. This approach has significant philosophical implication. It challenges the reductionist view that everything can ultimately be explained in terms of a single fundamental set of laws such as those governing particles in quantum mechanics. Instead, Bohm is supportive of emergence. But emergence always, to me, sounded something vague. When we don't want to define things clearly, we say it emerges. When I read this book, I think I now get a better grasp of what emergence means from Bohm's view. There are new laws emerging in a new level of reality, but they get to be affected by previous layers and it affects on next layers. So emergence can be explained by the laws specific to that reality plus the hidden variables coming from other realities. So in Bob's words, this emergence is the properties, laws that emerge at higher levels of complexity that cannot be fully explained by the properties of the lower level. Causality and freedom. Now we might say, was Bohm a determinist? A purely mechanical determinist? He was not. Uh, Bohm argued that the behavior of infinite levels of reality allows for complete causality at each level but avoids the trap of complete determinism. While the behavior at any given level can be understood and predicted if all its causes are known, the infinite depth of reality means that no level is fully determined by another. This opens up the possibility of freedom within the causal framework because it is impossible to account for all causes across infinite levels. Uh, this book rejected both the rigidity of mechanical determinism and the randomness of pure spontaneous. So, so Bohm was not a pure mechanical determinist nor proponent of random spontaneity. And in his view, the contradiction between different levels of reality, such as wave-like and 
particle-like behavior in quantum mechanics is to expression up different levels of reality interacting with one another. They have their own laws and these contradictions are not logical puzzles, but the driving force behind the continual evolution and transformation of nature. Think about the metaphor of a skyscraper that there is infinite levels. Every level have its own residence that have their own law. Based on those laws, they can predict the outcome of action. Like if you smoke in the lobby, there's this amount of fine. If you make noise, this is how much you get charged and so forth. And the contradiction between one level and another level could emerge new laws. For example, if the top level is a level making a lot of noises, but not much to violate the law of their own level, but as much to annoy the level below them, the new laws can emerge because this contradiction between the laws of two levels could bring new laws. So maybe from now on, do not jump, and, jump up and down in your kitchen because the layer underneath gets annoyed, even though you're not violating the law of your own level, you're annoying the previous level. So if this skyscraper is extended from top and bottom to infinity, then we can take up Bohm's causal framework for each level, plus the new hidden variables that could govern and produce new laws for each level that come from other layers or left. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about the idea of dialectical materialism by David Bohm.